Hello, and welcome to another episode of Demystifying Medicine. In this episode, we will be exploring West Nile virus, outlining its signs and symptoms, the mechanism of infection, and an overview of the current and future options available for the treatment of viral infection. But first, what is West Nile virus? Well, West Nile virus is a neurotropic flavivirus that has emerged as a significant cause of viral encephalitis around the world. In simpler terms, this means that this virus is a pathogen that preferentially attacks the nervous system, generally leading to inflammation of the brain. Being a member of the flavivirus genus, West Nile virus shares similarities with many other potentially fatal pathogens, including dengue, yellow fever, and Zika virus. However, this video will focus on West Nile virus as it is the leading cause of mosquito-borne disease in the continental United States. Originating in the West Nile district of Uganda in 1937, there have been multiple large outbreaks of the virus around the world, highlighting the dangers and concerns for vector-borne pathogens. Since its introduction to the US in 1999, West Nile has spread to become widely prevalent in Canada, with approximately 430 new cases in 2018. Some of the notable signs and symptoms of West Nile virus infection include fever, headache, tiredness, body aches, nausea, vomiting, skin rash, and swollen lymph glands. However, approximately 80% of infected people remain asymptomatic. So how exactly can someone become infected by this virus? As mentioned earlier in the video, West Nile virus is a mosquito-borne disease, meaning that its mode of transmission to humans occurs through bites from infected mosquitoes. What this means is that the virus cannot be transmitted from person to person, and infection can only occur after being bitten by one of these mosquitoes. Once a person is bitten, it is thought that initial West Nile virus infection occurs in the skin Langerhans dendritic cells, which are part of the skin immune system. Here, the virus enters the dendritic cell through receptor-mediated endocytosis, in which the virus exploits specific cell surface receptors to attach and enter the cell. Now in the vesicles of the cell, known as the endosome, the viral particles mature between the early endosome and late endosome stages. In the late endosome, the virions then release their single-stranded, positive-sense RNA genome into the cytoplasm of the cell, marking the beginning of viral replication. The original viral RNA is replicated by viral and cellular proteins into multiple copies to be used in the production of new virions. Using the host ribosomes in the endoplasmic reticulum, this viral RNA is translated into a single polypeptide that is post-translationally cleaved into 10 viral proteins. The proteins then associate with the replicated RNA to form new viral particles that travel to the cell membrane and release from the cell surface. From here, the newly released virions go on to infect other nearby cells, leading to the spread of West Nile virus throughout the central nervous system. Although this mechanism of viral infection is understood, what remains largely unknown is the exact mechanism of how the virus crosses the blood-brain barrier to enter the central nervous system. However, a few mechanisms have been hypothesized for this. First, it is thought that the virus likely infects the central nervous system through hematogenous spread, where the infected dendritic cells migrate into lymph nodes, leading to the presence of virions in the blood. Then, through passive transport through the endothelium, the viral particles may infect other neurons. It is also hypothesized that the infection of the central nervous system occurs through a Trojan horse mechanism, in which the virus is transported by infected immune cells that traffic to the central nervous system. And lastly, it is possible that the virus spreads through direct axonal retrograde transport from infected peripheral neurons. Overall, since these are all hypotheses for the possible means of central nervous system entry, additional research is required to provide a concrete mechanism. Once West Nile virus particles are introduced into the central nervous system, the infection of neurons leads to brain damage that results in the classic symptoms presented in patients. Specifically, it is the inflammation response of the innate immune system that leads to encephalitis. To combat the dangers of West Nile virus, researchers have been attempting to develop a solid treatment plan to treat infected patients. However, at this time, no vaccines or specific antivirals are available. As a result, treatment of this infection typically aims to alleviate the symptoms rather than eliminate the infection. This includes patients being hospitalized to receive supportive treatment such as intravenous fluids, pain medication, and nursing care. In addition to treatment options, countless efforts are being made to prevent the transmission of the virus. These prevention efforts are focused around three main targets, being the prevention of transmission in animals and humans, and the control of mosquito populations. Since mosquitoes pick up the infection from infected horses and birds, active animal health surveillance systems were established to detect new cases in these animals and to warn public health authorities. In regard to human prevention, 
efforts are being made to raise awareness of the risk factors and to educate people about the measures they can take to reduce exposure to this virus. All in all, West Nile virus is a prevalent and potentially fatal human pathogen that requires a collective effort to gain a better understanding of its underlying mechanisms and to develop future treatments. Thanks for watching.